everybody. My name is Mark Hilliard, and I am a master here on the Arcanum. And this evening, uh, we have the privilege of doing James Daniels C15. Uh, this is one of the big critiques. And uh, to say that uh, James has provided a group of extraordinary images for this is an understatement. Um, so, what are your thoughts, James, uh, as to your trip here in the Arcanum so far? Um, I have, I had this conversation with a friend of mine who works with me who's in Mason's Sphere 2 group today, and he and I were comparing notes, and, um, and he's the one I shoot with a bunch, and he's kind of my local tutor, mentor. Um, and he gets a, he gets to preview most of the photos that I think are really good, and, and so he he said that um, he sees a great change as far as what I feel is I've learned a lot more, especially coming in. You know, again, I came in with no no experience. You know, I was one of those people who had been taking pictures on their own and not had anything, any formal stuff and a little bit of reading. And so I certainly see some growth and some change. Um, I've learned to like different styles and and look forward to, you know, and now for us, the weekend, we typically spend the day just driving around looking for stuff for me to take pictures of. You know, fortunately, I've got a wife who's a great Sherpa. And so... That's how we spend our, our good time. Up. Yeah, well, I was sitting here tonight looking at waterfalls and grist mills to go visit Easy Walks. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to see the battery Tuesday and drive from there to Asheville Tuesday evening. Waterfalls. Oh, and, yeah, you were uh, at Asheville. You were around all kinds of grist mills that are just world class. Did you download the grist mill GPX file? I did. I was, we sat here last night looking at it. So there were two. We had to be within. We had to be within two two blocks of one. The one in Waynesville. You know, last time we were there and just didn't know about it. So I've got it. We looked. I'm kind of pl planning. Okay, I want to go to these falls or loops. Yeah. Good. Good. This sounds like a wonderful plan. Well. Um, before we start, uh, I, I would like to say that um, I, you have exhibited phenomenal growth here. Um, the quality of your images when you came in were not bad. Okay, you've got the right equipment, you know how to use it. Um, but you are delving uh, much deeper into the uh, philosophy behind the photography now. And it seems to really show in your work. Uh, there's great thought that you put into it, uh, vision, if if you will. And your images seem to tell stories now, uh, which I find to be uh, absolutely wonderful and heartwarming to view. So let's keep it up and keep on going. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Let me share the desktop. We'll get going on this. I am all prepared for you. Even have your images loading. We're going to save the woo-woo to last. <laughs> and um, if you would, would you just give me uh, your initial thoughts and impressions of the image as you're standing there and your vision for it, please? Um, well, you know, you've seen this doc every, every critique we've had. Yes, I have. And it's my Friday night happy hour, and I'll be there tomorrow if the weather holds out and and uh, fighting the sand mats already. Yeah. And this was one of those nights where I wish there were was a better cloud cover, but the afterglow and and I was really thinking the afterglow was not going to be that good. And as you can tell, this is an extremely low tide for whatever reason. I believe this and the lighthouse picture were taken consecutive days. Like this was the night and then the lighthouse was the next day. All right. 
and for whatever reason, the tides were really low there for a couple of days, and I've not seen them. Matter of fact, on the following day, I walked all the way out to the end of the dock here and got the soles of my boot wet. Okay. That's how 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 low it was, and the wind was the wind was dead calm. The water was, and again, this is a fairly protected bay. It, it, it takes a pretty good wind to, to make it move. And the afterglow to me was, it suddenly just kind of came out of nowhere. And I had moved, this was my third or fourth setup, different angles, shooting different angles. And I got there early and was trying to shoot the sun coming down the rows. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of had moved around a little bit. And the afterglow just finally showed up. And it was just one of those nights where it was it was nice and cool, and um, it, it was just a pretty night. And and the the first thing I thought when I seen this picture in the viewfinder after it processed and came up was, holy crap, the poles are upside down in the water. You know, <laughs> the reflection was, I was like, you know, you can't ask for a much better reflection. No, and you still did this at thirty seconds too. So yeah. Now, did you have any kind of filter on the camera for this? Um, I probably had uh, either a four and an eight in a in a a UV filter, or an eight in a UV filter. I don't remember what all I had. Okay, now let me ask you: Why are you putting a UV filter on? Um, it had been on there for shooting out and out prior in the afternoon. And I just I put the filters on top of it, and I just didn't take it off. Okay. But I know I know it was there. I I basically kind of especially down there in the refuge when I'm tromping around, I I try to leave something on the end of my lens all the time. Not just an open. I'd rather scratch a UV filter or or something than than to scratch my lens with the dirt and stuff. Okay. Now is this pluff mud in the foreground? Yeah. So if you stepped in this, you were up to your knees. It's not that bad, but it, it would cover your cover your shoe pretty easy. Okay. Well, I, I love the composition of this. All right. And your exposure is absolutely dead on. Um, we're, we're, we're getting... Um, what time of day? Mm, well... Probably six fifteen ish. It was not shot not all that long ago. I don't remember what day I shot this, but probably you know five forty five to six fifteen. The sun had already I, the sun was down below the horizon. Well, I'm I'm trying to figure out where you were standing in reference to the sun going down like this. It's um, at the far corner along the la la um, land line, the far left. Okay. So the sun sets that that land that's in the horizon. You know, I I realize the sun's off to the left, but I'm trying I'm trying to picture you know, you know where this was in 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 the big uh, uh, in, in the bay there. What do you mean? Where you were able to sit and shoot towards the west, and 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 get this great location. Um. I shoot. I don't. I mean, I, I don't understand. I mean, I've shot. I shoot there all the time. So it's it's basically. Um, I mean, you know, I just step to the to the left of the pier. Oh no no I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not oh. being not not specific locations. <laughs> uh, where in Florida? Oh, St. Mark's. It's right next to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is. If I turned and looked behind me, the lighthouse is right there on the beach. Okay, and then what is this spit of land over that here? That is Panacea. On the map, you would see it as Panacea. Okay. All right. So I'm it's just... kind of a it's kind of a, a hook bay, you know, just a cove bay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to the... get a feeling for you know where you were standing, not in relationship to the to the scene, but in relationship to in Florida. Uh, yeah. So thank you for cl clearing that up. <laughs> 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 miles from my door to this dock. Oh, that's just not fair. Yeah. Oh, whatever. You got plenty of them right there at you. Yeah. <laughs>
This uh, is the best pier I've got within close range of me. Yeah, but I don't have anything like this the, where you can shoot at sunset. It's all sunrise here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, this 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 is fabulous. Um, the the colors and the saturation that you've rendered in the sky is fabulous. The uh, the blue hour starting to creep in. Uh, we're starting to see the shadow of the Earth over here. Okay. All right. Um, the 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 lovely stillness of the water is just breathtaking. It sucks the viewer right into it. Um, I wish the tide had been a little higher to to get rid of a little bit of this this mud. All right. But that's one of those deals. You get the bear, or the bear gets you. You cannot control the tide at sunset. All right. Um, and I really do love the 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 detail in the reflection on the water. Especially this this little broken off part out here. Absolutely stunning. Um, I like the fact that you've left the the mud slightly dark down here, so it doesn't take away from the overall image. Uh, this this works very very well. Um, what lens did you use? Uh, the Sony twenty four to two forty. Okay, so this is on your new camera. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at that here real quick. F4. Okay. And you had it at 30 millimeters. That's what I wanted to know. Um, just absolutely lovely work. Um, as far as sunsets goes, this is right at the top of the batch. Um, given that you've got the, the wonderful smooth water. You, is it always this smooth here like this, or were you just lucky that night? Um, this is pretty... It, it's a fairly protected bay, but this night was exceptionally still. Okay. Um, now, it's having, hard to get into the milky water. Yeah. Now, having given you all of the wonderful glowing reviews of this, um, have you picked up that I'm I'm a little hesitant on the, this major amount of mud in the foreground? Yeah, and I I kind of played with some of the crops, and mm -hmm. and if I ran the crop up to the edge of the water, um, I lost some of the dock. It just you know, yeah, if you, if, you, if you kept it, if you kept <clears throat> it three by four format, absolutely. All right. Um, but consider future ones, if you can get there when the tide's higher, if you can work in a shot like this where the dock's kind of coming out of the right. closer to the lower right-hand corner, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of this mud's fine, but, you know, past a certain amount, it doesn't add anything to the picture. Right. Uh, given that it's so dark, it really doesn't detract much. But I find my eyes constantly going down here to the mud, especially this area over here because it's picking up highlights of the sun reflecting across the water on the edge. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it's not. I'm going to give you a three on the image regardless. Um, but uh, this is just a wee bit too much. But now, that's why I ask you, uh, what your vision was, and if your vision included the mud, then just forget everything that I told you. Well, I mean, initially I was, you know, the the mud had kind of became part of the picture. Um, mm -hmm. The vision I I thought of was just the reflection on the water, and I had already been to the right, mm -hmm. so closer to the dock and back a little bit, so more in line. And the pictures from there. Um, the reflection is not as strong. Okay. So, so the reflection, the reflection on th this set of photos is what put this photo at the forefront. Yeah, that was your that was your central point in setting it up. Right. Right. It, it, the the reason I picked this was the, you know, the, that still water deserves a reflection, and the only yeah, thing there to reflect is the sun and the dot and the, pier, the what's left of that pier. Well, you know, the nice thing about this is, is I don't have to tell you. I'd like to see you revisit this because I know you revisit this a dozen more times. This, See this there tomorrow. Time. Right there um, tomorrow. 
but this image is is stunning it's simple yet it tells a story uh, it's full of mood and the 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 color and the reflection just add wonder to it just this is just a wee bit distracting down here okay just a wee bit not enough to to, to ding you on it just to have you think about it okay all right Oh, the lighthouse. Tell me about this one. So this is St. Mark's Lighthouse. It's actually fixing to lose its light this year. It will no longer be an operating lighthouse. The Coast Guard has decided that with all the GPS and Navtronics out there that no one needs a lighthouse anymore. So... <clears throat> I went down, I don't remember what I was doing down there this day. I think it was the day after I shot that pier, the previous pier picture. Anyway, this was shot middle of the afternoon kind of thing. This is actually, I think, a two or three second exposure. And I, I was shooting with ND filter, I believe. Yep, three seconds. Yeah, I, was shoot, I had some filter on there. And I don't remember what I was down there trying to do, but I walked out and just seen the curve on the beach and the lines and basically just took my tripod and laid it on the ground as low as it would go and just kind of <clears throat> kind of snapped the picture and walked away. And the funny thing is, is I can remember working this picture and getting it home. I was one of the last pictures I took that day. I was late to be home and, and my wife had already texted me a couple times, so... I snapped this picture and walked away, and I, when I got home and looked at it, I, I was telling her, I said, you know, I said, well, I tried to put that lighthouse on the on the power line, and on the original, un, uncropped and stuff, it was dead center on the, on, the, on the one-third grid line. And I was like, well, it's not too bad for, you know, eyeballing it and looking through the camera grid, and I didn't have the grid on in the camera. And so I got to looking at it, and the sky in this, the sky in this was just one of those skies that, the sky had a lot of mood in it that day. Okay. Okay. Well, I love your choice of black and white on this. This really adds impact and mood to the overall image. And the detail that you've drawn out of the of this bright sky from the raw image is, is just lovely. Um, I, I, I like that you placed the lighthouse on the one-third line. Um, but this path, is this a path? It's actually a beach line. If you look at the raw, you'll see that I kind of drew it in. Okay. Um, if we're going to show this curve, uh, we should have a, just a slight bit more of it over here rather than being cut off mm -hmm. because this is a nice curve, but this is an S curve. Right, right. And by, and by just showing a little bit more of this over on the right-hand edge, we will be able to have continuity as we follow this 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 curve around to the lighthouse, um, and it will add a, a little bit more power to the image. Okay. Yeah, I, I, if you look at that raw, you can tell I I path I um, did some clone stamping and took out and actually added the little bit of white in there, mm -hmm. so it would so it would at least connect the curves. I was trying to get that curve. Yeah, I see what you did. Yeah, I was that, trying to that get that. Works too. That that works too. Um, so let's go back and look at that again. So I was just trying to get a little bit of that curve, thinking, well, you know, it, it fades out just above it, and so you know, you don't want a wide sweeping curve there because it's really not what was there. So, you know, I was like, well, I can narrow it down a little bit, and, and most eyeballs won't notice that I clone stamped it. Yeah. Well, you could also consider uh, cloning in a little bit more sand right here right. in this okay. corner. Okay? Yep. Widen it out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this is truly a wonderful portrait of a lighthouse. You did an excellent job on this. It's full of mood and wonder. And uh, just short of maybe a little bit more sand right here. So okay. that we can have this S curve instead of a C curve. Mm -hmm. um, that might that might improve it ever so slightly. Okay. 
Um, this is one, and I wish I'd been there with you. Uh, this, this is a this is a very good image. I'm gonna give you a two and a half on this image, okay? All right. Um, let's move on. Yeah, I know. I, I that's a teaser. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the double barns. Um, so this is in South Georgia. We we were one of our trips out driving around. Actually, the best picture out of this day trip, my wife took on her phone and, and <laughs> Instagram and, and posted it. And it's this old house up there that's just, after she did it, the Japanese magnolia. And it's, you know, it, and I didn't stop and shoot it. I was like, eh, whatever. And so these two old barns were sitting out in the edge of a field, and there's a big field behind them. And I just like these old barns. You know, they're going away. I, when I put up my photos for for everyone to look at. I was trying to, I had two, I had a tobacco barn that was falling down and I had this and I was trying to make twos of everything and, and show some some difference in range and and branch out. And so um, this was really kind of a snapshot. I just got out of the car and I was like, I want to shoot those barns and, and, and mm -hmm. I, it was really kind of just a snapshot. And I came home and played with it, and, and I just like the the detail on the gate of the barn on the left, and you know you can see some of the you know it's just the age of it. The flap oh, yeah. is flopped up on the other one, and of the all of all of the this group of photos, I think this is the weakest of them. But I you know I like the sky in this photo. I like how it turned out. Um, there's a big work on the foreground, how much to put in, how much to take out, you know, and from the original photo. And, and you, 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 you made good choices on that. That the, the foreground looks absolutely perfect. Um, I like the, the, the good cloning job of removing the tree over here. Mm -hmm. um, good exposure, good colors, uh, lovely clarity and sharpness. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, other than that, the only little suggestion I can have for you is you are really crowding your subjects. Right. Yep. Um, if you could have, you know, maybe see this amount of space here. Mm -hmm. If you could double that here and double this over here, um, the the picture wouldn't be that crowded because if you were to go and print this and to frame this, right. Part of these barns would be under the rabbit of the frame. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I I like your choice in the foreground setup and processing. Uh, the, the yellow flowers are they stand out nicely against the green grass, and I like the gate here, like you said too. I, I like that the fact that there's a bit of yellow in it as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, the roofs are, are you know they're long gone. This is definitely in the in the area of Wabi Sabi, and uh, I, I appreciate the work that you put into this. But just remember, a little, don't crowd your subject on the edges, okay? Okay. Um, that's that's a very important thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, great image, and you know, you, you say snapshot, I say travel shot. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those that made me pull over and stop, so. And, yep, yeah. I love it. There's that teaser again. Okay. I like this. Tell me about it. All right, so I called this high mileage, and so this is the trucks right down the road from, from my house, um, and they're really rapidly being tore up by the kids. And I've gone and shot this truck a couple of times. You know, I've shot down there a couple of times. And anyone who's ever ridden an old Ford truck recognizes that dash. Mm -hmm. the, the the crosses on it are just, you know, they're, you know, iconic almost. And so when I was setting up for this shot, I was, I had shot it prior to looking through the cab. And, you know, I was looking for a different angle and, and was look, trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and, and I'd taken a picture where I'd shot the custom cab, and it was kind of my focal point. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, I don't want to do that on on this one. I'd, I'd, 
and I shot it like like that before, and I was standing there looking at it, and I said, I don't want that. You know, I need to get it further into there. And I was looking at the steering wheel and the odometer. And I was the like, odometer, oh. yeah, that's what uh, my eyes are immediately drawn to that odometer. And so I shot this with the the Sony 90, and put the scroll the the focus box over on it, and and really sharpened it on the on the odometer, and snapped the picture. And I like the way it's set up. I like the texture in the truck. Um, and you know, I mean, I like I like this texture. I, lo- I like I'm I like shooting the the cars because they are every time I go there, there's something different. Yeah. Um, I, this shot was the shot of the day for me down there. I actually put two two of them up, and one was kind of a a, ho- a hokey shot, but it's one of those that lots of people here, around here have very similar shots. Mm-hmm. So actually, my buddy, who's a Mason's group, actually posted one for his level twenty-four of kind of a similar hokey shot. Yeah. But this shot to me is, you know, you can see the detail in it, and you know what this is, and the high mileage just kind of brings it out, and you know, you know, this truck's had miles on it and, and lots of work. Oh yeah. No, I like this. I I like. The, the depth that you mm-hmm. went to to get the detail here, uh, the planning on making this your main focal point, uh, that really, really works. Um, yeah, I love everything about this. I find no faults. I have no suggestions. Um, I also like the fact that most people would go, and they if they wanted to shoot here, they would put this in the lower right-hand corner. And then we would have a, a vast amount of white windshield, right? With nothing behind it, and and you effectively reduce that to the point that it's not distracting. Um, yeah, no, this is perfect. And my, as you said, my eyes are drawn directly to the odometer. Uh, this is this is a masterful creation, and it's a definite three on on the scale of things. Okay. Um, yeah, I can see why you said that that was your photo of the day. This this really works. Thank you. You do seem to have a talent uh, for capturing Wabi Sabi. Uh, Thank you. I, I really do like this. All right. Uh, let's talk about this guy. Ah, uh, the Great Blue. He's coming in for a landing. So if I tell you... This was a planned shot, and this is what I meant to do, and this is how it was went down, and this was my pre-planning. I would sound like a genius. And yeah, I and I'd, to, I'd probably call you a liar. I go back to my a blind hog finds an acorn, and this is my acorn. I found an acorn every every time we've done one of these. This is the acorn for this trip. Okay. Um, I was in the refuge sneaking up on the bald eagles, and um, this was shot with my Nikon in the TAM, and... Um, I had the TAM out, and I had been trying to sneak closer to the bald eagles. And on that side of the levee that the eagles were on, my shutter speed was up around 800. Mm-hmm. And I was standing there, kind of messing around, and I was standing next to a tree, trying to watch the eagles. There were two eagles sitting there looking at me. And suddenly, I just heard something behind me, and kind of instinctively turned and shot like you know, you throw the camera up like you're shooting skeet or shotgun yeah. or whatever. And I caught the bird and got got on the bird and you know of course he's moving the opposite direction I'm moving because I was turning right to left and he's coming left or right and I finally caught him and I got well three photos of him in it but the last one is only his head and he's hidden by everything else yeah so my shutter speed dropped to whatever this is it went from one eight hundred to I think this is like one thirty or one one forty of a one fortieth of a second fiftieth okay. So that's what caused the blurring in it, and really straight. I mean, if you look at what I've done in this, this there's very little work on it. I put it in by Visa and, and bumped it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's it. There's I didn't add structure to it. I, I didn't do a whole lot of work to it. It just I brightened the colors a little bit. Um, I changed the background color from what I had shown. In the pre-critique, I, I put some a little bit of greens in there to kind of make it stand out a little bit instead of yeah. just brown. And I changed the crop. And unfortunately, this is the photo, and 
and trying to clone and put some of that stuff in behind and match the shadows, mm -hmm. I don't know that it would look very well. And, and so I just didn't put the effort into it. I, I like the photo. I tried to change the crop to where he's got room coming in to land so you see where he's going, yep. that open space. Cropping it lower on the top kind of changed it some, and I didn't like the way it looked, so I cropped it square and left it like this, and then put a little bit of a vignette of a, I think I used gray around it, like 30% opacity, and tried to vignette it in so you, it would draw your attention more to, to him instead of some of the some of the stuff in the background. Yeah, well, this is very creative, and as you were panning, obviously, while the bird came in, um, and it's such a slow shutter speed. I mean, he's flapping his wings like crazy to slow right. down. So you've got you've got this wonderful bl blue blur <laughs> here, and in his feet, which are getting ready to engage. <coughs> the head is semi sharp. It's really sharp down in here. Uh, so he's probably moving his head a little, you know, right. making sure of his landing coordinates. Um, the background's wonderful. I, I just I love everything about this. This is very artsy fartsy. Uh, this goes way beyond woo woo in that you've created something in camera uh, that really really works. Um, this is a technique that I will use once in a while to take pictures of a bird in flight. Mm -hmm. All right, and I will use a slower shutter speed and I will pan as the birds moving and hope to get a sharp shot of the bird you'd have the background being blurring by right. so you get you know the horizontal line right. um, this is lovely I like everything about this and this is a, a big solid three for me um, uh, as I said these are all stunning images um, and this, if this is any indication of, of where we're heading, I can't wait to see uh, your work after C15. Uh, you, you've done a, a fabulous job, and congratulations are in order. Uh, you are definitely leveled up. Uh, I will do that when we're done here for you. Um, but I would sure like to see more of this style from you, too, once in a while. Um, don't stop doing your sunrises and sunsets because you have a real gift for that as well. I like shooting my birds. Most of the birds, unfortunately, most of the really pretty birds have left for this season. Yeah, so, they're all coming up here. Yeah, I'm waiting for, uh, now I'm waiting for the, the next pretty birds that will be here probably in uh, six, five, six months or the spoonbills. They'll be up here. Yeah, believe it or not, we're starting to see spoonbills here too. They're flying in with the uh, with other birds. <coughs> really? Yeah. Wow. We had one at the refuge that hung out with a a flock of egrets for about two months after every uh, all the other ones had left. You know what we're seeing here are, are um, <coughs> flocks of storks, black storks coming mm -hmm. in from Florida, and there's always a couple spoonbills with them. Interesting, um, but no, this is this is this is really really a, a great set, James. Um, you got a lot to be proud of here. Well, I fretted over a couple of them and went against the grain on a couple. Everybody wanted a black and white version of the pier, and that no, color no, no. version is is much better in my opinion. And yeah, actually, no. the, if if you're if you're shooting sunrise. <laughs> Or sunsets, uh, the the color of the light <coughs> reflecting across the water really can make the image. And I'm not saying it wouldn't be good in black and white too. It wouldn't be nearly as good. Yeah, I, I like the black and white, but I, that that sunset and that herring and the odometer are three pictures that I can look at and like every time I look at them. Okay. I haven't got tired of them. Matter of fact, I was looking today, and and I'm gonna take a picture out of my office and put the herring in, in it, and so and I'll probably I got a couple. I want to make a big collage of kind of wabi sabi muted colored okay. pictures that I've gotten, 
Good. So. Yeah, we're going to have to get you up to Old Car City. You'll probably die um, with creative anxiety once you see what's there. Yeah, that friend of mine went and shot it last year, and um, we were actually going to go to Atlanta Monday night and say and mess around in Atlanta, and we decided to go to Charleston. So we're going to shoot. I'm trying to decide where I want to shoot. I think we're going to stay in Savannah and then drive into Charleston, you know, get up and shoot Sunrise in Savannah and then and drive into Charleston and then um, go to the Battery. And then we're going to work our, start working our way towards Asheville. There's a couple of grist mills right on the, you know, kind of on the way. Yes, there are. And so I'm going to swing through and we'll swing through and hit those. And those are easy enough that if my wife's not feeling like wandering around at that point, yeah. Things hit in the car for the most part. So. Yeah. Well, very good job. Congratulations. Uh, what do you all have to think and say? Please join us. Did a nice job. Thank you. James, how did you do the truck one? Is that a HDR or did you do an effect to it or what? Um, it's not HDR. And actually, the buddy of mine that, who asked me, he goes, that looks like HDR. My wife said, it's, oh, that's overcooked. I said, you know, I said, this is how it's supposed to look, and I just like that. It's um actually I put it in Viviza and used um, tonal contrast and detail extractor, and just kind of slid it around and played with it until it looked. You know, I typically go with the default on both of those, and don't bump it a whole bunch. You know, sometimes, especially detail extractor, you can. A little bit of that goes. A little bit of that's like salt. It goes a long, long ways, and so. Yep, it, it, it did. It, it it turned out lovely too. I just cannot believe how sharp that odometer turned out. That that's great. That Sony 90 is a, and a, it's it's got me to where I'm debating a 50 for the Sony, and just. The 90 in some instances, I think, you know, not, I'm used to, that 24 to 240 is a great lens. I love it. It's a great general purpose shooting lens. But that 90 is, I've taken a couple pictures. And actually, when I go to the trucks, I only carry that, I only put that camera, that lens on that camera. I don't shoot, it, shoot them anymore with the, the other lens very much. And yeah, that's that's funny you said that because when I do Old Car City, it's it's normally with the, the the Leica 90 macro. Yeah, and it's a great. I mean, and literally, I was standing there and I was kind of looking at it in in the camera and was driving the driving the the, the box around and I was like the odometer. That's it, and I sharpened it up and snapped the picture and you know the rest is history. But I love that. Here, man. Yeah, I love that photo. Okay. Flat field. Flat field lens. You can't get better, my friend. No. If you want sharpness. Yeah. If you want sharpness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start trying to shoot some bugs and, and get that feel. <laughs> I had a trout lily that I had put up. I wanted to show some macro. I tried to go with... I had a picture of the boats to compete with the lighthouse that I had considered for um, kind of wabi-sabi stuff. And then two old barns, and then I had the odometer. I had the, those two cars, and I forgot what my two flowers were. But the trout lilies, you know, are only six inches off the ground, and they hang upside down. And I, I had one of those that I really liked, and so they, they lost out. Well done, my friend. I would have uh, encouraged you to put the color picture in as well for the pier. I, I like that as better than the black and white. Yeah. So, when I was well making done. when I was making my final decision the other day, I was with my buddy, and he goes, he goes, you're an idiot if you don't put that colored one in there. He goes, <laughs> he goes, your pictures have gotten better. He goes, that's your best, if not the one of the top three best pictures I've seen you put out. I was like, okay. It's good yeah. to have friends like that around, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it, he's a great and he's a Photoshop guru, and so you know. We're actually going to do. I'm actually waiting for a rainy Saturday, so I don't have. So I'm not. I don't feel like I'm missing shooting a rainy Saturday or Sunday. And we're going to go sit down, and it costs me lunch when he gives me my Photoshop tutorials. Bring your. Bring That's your cheap. <laughs> no, he's he's a big boy. 
But yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's absolutely, and you know, we'll sit there and all right, bring a bring a list of questions and let's answer them. Are we ever going to meet him? Well, actually, he's the one who, when you put up Charleston, that flyer, he's the one who who commented on it, and so I'm trying to get him. I want to do. Um, I can't do Charleston. We're going to do Atlanta. So I'll be Atlanta at Atlanta for sure, and he may be with me. If I can, the problem is, is there's got to be four of us at work, and I'm the boss, and so it's kind of one of those. Now I got to be kind of careful of the relationship, and so um, if I can get him off and me off, then he will probably be in Atlanta. Well, he works with you. Yeah, he's my employee. <laughs> he was a friend of mine. I worked with him in the ICU, and then I hired him. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's like, so he he'll I'll be with him Saturday shooting the horse trials, and so he'll be he wants to come to Atlanta, and then I'm trying to get I'd like to do one of Les's macros over the summer, and he's not a big macro guy, and I was like, come on, man, I said there's gonna and he's really more of a portrait, landscape is second nature to him, and so I was like, come on, you can do it, it's you know whatever, we'll split the cost and. You know, to be a good weekend. What else are you gonna do? And so, he's artsy fartsy. He he likes a lot of what I sent him the link, Sherry, that you sent me uh, for the the whatever it was we talked about. It. Yeah, yeah, because that's right in his wheelhouse. The guy mm -hmm. who runs it is out of South Carolina as well, or North Carolina. Ash, I think he's out of North Carolina. So, but yeah, yeah he he'll be around. I think. I think he will do a workshop or two. I'm going to